Hello everybody, I'm Billabob from BVR, and today I'm here with an updated Zero Gravity tutorial. Since my last video, there's been a new patch with some changes, and technically that old method still works, but this new one is way easier to follow. And there have also been some smaller things like renaming of chips and physics that I think just warrants a new tutorial. Again, I want to reiterate that having a Circuits V2 knowledge will help you understand this a lot better, but I also want to make this accessible to people who just want to go in and do exactly what I do to try and get it working themselves, even if they don't know that much much about CV2. I'm going to be showing how to do this for players and objects, and then some extra stuff near the end, like doing it for both or doing it for multiple objects. So first, let's get into some basic setup again. So the first thing you want to do, if you haven't already, is go to create in your watch, and then create a maker room. It'll prompt you to enter a name, just enter whatever, hit create, and it will take you to a custom room like this. Then on your watch, you want to go to this room, go to settings, go to roles, go to everyone, grab your maker pen, and then make sure that can fly is set to yes. And then the last thing we have to do is enable circuits v2. So go to this room, settings, general setup, go to the second page, and then check allow creative tools beta content. Then you want to click on apply settings. Okay, it should reload your room. And then if you go to your watch, go to backpack, you can favorite your maker pen, and then you can grab out from behind your back, pull out your maker pen, open your palette, and there should be a circuits v2 tab right here. All right, we've turned on circuits v2. You have your maker pen. You can fly by holding down the jump button with your hand facing upwards like this and then you can stop flying by pressing the jump button on your other controller. So we're all set up, let's start doing some zero gravity. First, I'm going to show you how to set up zero gravity for all of the players in the room. So you want to go to your circuits v2 tab and grab an event receiver. Go to configure on your maker pen and then configure this to be an update 30 hertz receiver. Go back to your circuits v2 tab and grab a multiply chip. Take this delta time output, put it into the multiply, and then in this second value, you can uh, just click on it with the wire tool and then enter 9.81, hit OK. Go back, and then boom. This orange chip is basically just a really fast pulse that we're going to be using to set the zero gravity, and this product is going to be the speed we're setting the zero gravity at. So let's find the impulse add chip and put this down and see all of the other nodes that we need to fill. So first we need an object, and we want that to be all players. And all we need to do for that is get a get local player chip, put that here, and then wire this into object, and then it will work for every player in the room. Next we need the speed, which as I said earlier, we already calculated, so you can put that in there. Then we need the direction, so grab a vector create create here and then set the y value and only the y value to one you can leave the other ones as zero and then drag this vector into direction and then for max impulse added it doesn't really matter i'm just going to set this to 10 and then all we got to do to turn it on is hook up these and then boom you can see here i've got zero gravity if any other players join this room then they will have this zero gravity as well if you accidentally fling yourself up into the abyss you can just uh, fly back down that'll override it i feel like it's also important to note that this isn't technically actual zero gravity because you can still move around with your joystick. But honestly, this is also a lot better than actual zero gravity, where if you get stuck out in the middle of nowhere, you're just screwed and can't do anything. All right, let's unwire this and then set it up for an object, which is a lot easier than it was before. First, we need to grab our object. Let's go to props, let it lag, go to sports, and then spawn in a basketball. I want to configure this basketball and look at the tag. Now, it just got basketball. I'm just going to add a shorter one, like B1, basically, and then you can go back here. And then you want to remember whatever tag you gave it, or you can just use basketball. It doesn't really matter. We want a creation object to get all with tag and then set the tag here to be whatever you set your tag to on the ball. So I just am going to make it be one. And for now, I'm only going to set this up so that it only works on one object currently. So after the objects with tag, you want a get element, and then you can link these lists into each other and the index can just stay as zero. And then that's basically all we need. We can just clone over this impulse add from over there. The speed is going to be the same. So you can just use this multiply product as well. The object is going to be this get element we just did. The direction is also going to be the same. So we can just use the same vector create again. And then this doesn't really matter either. So all we have to do now is put this into the update 30 hertz instead, and then you'll see the ball starts floating. Then if I grab it and kind of hit it around like that, boom, that's object zero gravity. And that is so much easier than the setup I showed in the last video, because it now works basically the same as player zero gravity. And that should be basically all you need. It's really simple. It only takes these circuits, uh, but I'm going to go a little bit above and beyond with it. So firstly, something really easy we can do is set it up for both. So just make it go through this first impulse add into the second one for objects, and then you can see now we are both floating. It's kind of annoying to have to like unhook these every time you want to stop floating around so you can edit the circuits. So go to your props dynamic last page and spawn in a toggle button V2. You can then grab an if chip and put it right here, and then take this is pressed value and put it into the if, and then you can wire your 30 hertz update receiver into that, and then the then value of the if into these. And you can see here, even though I wired it up, nothing is happening because this isn't pressed. If I click it, you'll see we start floating, 
If I click it again, we fall. So right now, if I turn this on and start throwing around this ball, you see it actually looks really smooth for me, but if someone else joined this room right now, they would see this ball kind of jittering around and it wouldn't look very good. So what we want to do is grab a has authority of chip, put the end of this get element, which is the ball, into the target, then grab an if chip, throw it right here, put the result into here, and then we just need to wire the if chip into our sequence. So attach the then into that and attach the input into whatever comes before. And then you're probably not going to notice a difference, but if another player joins now, this ball will be a lot less jittery. So that's good if you're planning on making this kind of a multiplayer thing. The next thing we can do is make this work for multiple balls. So you see if we clone this and then hit this button, only that one will float. So what we can do is instead of getting the first index of this list, we can actually just loop through the entire list. So you want to make sure that all of these balls have the B1 tag or whatever tag you gave them earlier. And then you want to grab a for each chip. We can just put this like here. And then you can get rid of this get element chip and instead wire this item list into the items input here. You can unhook this, put this player impulse add into this for each, and this will basically just loop through this entire list of items. So you can drag this item into the target thing here and back into the object. And then then you want to wire this loop into the if and then you can see here if I turn this on they will all begin to float if I grab and throw them you'll see that all of these balls are now zero gravity you can see here some of them are kind of flying off though what do you do if you have that issue you can go into the circuits v2 tab and hit send room reset event and then wow they'll all be back and your toggle button will turn off automatically there's one last thing I want to show and that's how to do it for just one player this is really simple all we got to do is delete this get local player and under this press tab we want to drag this player into this object and then now when pressing this button instead of affecting all of the players in this room it'll only affect the person who pressed the button in this case me so there you go that's the easy method to get 0G in Rec Room. It's way easier than it was before because you can basically just use the player 0G method now for the balls too. I never want to talk about 0G again. I hope this is the definitive final tutorial to end all tutorials. Make sure to subscribe. Did I already say that? I don't know. Goodbye. Thank you for watching. Hey, thanks for making it to the end of the video. You know, if you enjoyed it, there's a subscribe button right there, but you know, no pressure. Also, I think there's a video you'll enjoy right here, so click on that if you'd like to, and that's about it. See you next time.